How's it going guys? It is 12.51 a.m. 13th of December here in Japan and we have a difficult question for pulmonary for step one as well as for internal medicine for 2CK. This is nearly identical to an offline NBME question that repeats on the online forums, okay? So this concept is something you assembly wants you to know. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group channel are down below. I don't start the clip. So 52-year-old man, two-week history, shortness of breath, vitals are normal. Physical exam unremarkable. Laboratory studies show PO2 low, 32 millimeters of mercury should be 33 to 44. PO2 normal, 98 millimeters of mercury should be 80 to 100. Obviously, as close to 100 as possible. Arterial O2 content is low. Question wants to know the most likely explanation is for these findings. So let's just whip to the answer choice here. Choice A, anemia is the correct answer. Now, I'll tell you exactly what you need to know for this question. Okay? You look at the PO2 and it's normal. That means our lungs are not fucked up. Okay? PO2 is the dissolved oxygen in the blood. So if it's normal, you know that your lungs are working perfectly fine. There's no fibrosis there. There's no COPD. Okay, so our dissolved oxygen is normal. O2 content is low. And you say, well, the process for oxygenation in the blood is oxygen obviously has to enter your alveoli. It's going to diffuse into your uh, vascular compartment, which is going to be your dissolved oxygen, PO2, and then it's going to hop onto the hemoglobin as HbO2. That's the sequence. So the only way it's possible for our O2 content to be low in the blood is if our HbO2 is low, our oxygen on the hemoglobin is low. O2 content is going to be your dissolved oxygen, PO2, which is about 2% or lower of your oxygen in the blood, plus the oxygen that's on the hemoglobin. That's the O2 content of the blood. Our dissolved oxygen is clearly normal here. So the only way it's possible to have a low O2 content is if our hemoglobin bound oxygen is low. So anemia is an explanation for that. Our saturation would be fine of the hemoglobin. It's just we have low hemoglobin. So the HbO2 is low, a low number, plus normal dissolved oxygen. And then our net result is a low O2 content in the blood. Now, we could also theoretically have other correct answer choices such as CO poisoning, where carbon monoxide higher affinity is bound to the hemoglobin and the oxygen just simply can't bind it. So our HbO2 would be low in that case, despite having a normal dissolved oxygen after being on hyperbaric oxygen especially. And it could also be methemoglobinemia, where you have ferric iron for the hemoglobin, oxygen can't bind it. So HbO2 would be low and then you'd have normal dissolved oxygen because you're breathing just fine. O2 content in the blood is low, which they're not answer choices here, and our vignette doesn't give us anything about a ventilator or dude drinking out of uh, lake water in the mountains, okay? That can cause, or, or eating deli meats, that can cause methemoglobinemia. So let's just whip through the other answer choices here. Choice B, drug-induced alveolar hypoventilation, wrong fucking answer. We know this is wrong because CO2 would be high if we had hypoventilation. Barbiturates, benzos, opioids... Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, high altitude residents. Wrong answer. So CO2 would be low at high altitude initially, respiratory compensation for the lower oxygen tension. We could achieve normal arterial PO2 because we're just breathing more. And then our O2 content, however, would be normal because we have a normal amount of hemoglobin. And as long as the dissolved oxygen's normal, it's just going to hop onto the hemoglobin just fine. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, alveolar, arterial mismatch, wrong answer. So our lungs are perfectly fine, normal dissolved oxygen in the blood. So we know we don't have an AA mismatch, okay? So if we had a problem with our lungs, let's say fibrosis, where we get uh, inability to have the oxygen diffuse across the uh, simple squamous epithelium of the type 1 pneumocytes, or if we had COPD, emphysema component, for instance, where we have loss of the alveolar surface area, we'd have we'd be breathing in oxygen fine. So the oxygen in the alveoli is fine, but it's not getting into the blood. So the arterial oxygen is low. So the difference between the alveolar and the arterial oxygen is a big number. That's why you get a high AA gradient when you have lung disease. If we have normal lungs, 
but we're just hypoventilating, as I mentioned before, barbiturates, benzos, opioids. If hypoventilation is the reason you have low arterial oxygen, well, you'd have a normal AA gradient slash low. Okay, low slash normal. Okay, it's not going to be elevated is the point because the only reason you have a low arterial O2 is because your alveolar oxygen is low. You're hypoventilating. Okay, wrong fucking answer. So I see voluntary hyperventilation, wrong answer. So obviously our PCO2 is low, okay, which we would get in hyperventilation. We would have a normal dissolved oxygen as we have here in hyper involuntary hyperventilation, but we wouldn't get a low arterial O2 content. Your hemoglobin would be perfectly fine. So you would have normal saturation of the hemoglobin. Nothing would change in that regard. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal, Nick, to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.